Thank you, Megan. Kimberly Ebert Colella, class of 1982, please come forward to receive the Benedictine Service Award. <laughs> this award honors an alumna who has made a significant impact on those around her with her continued commitment and contributions to community service and social justice at a regional, national, or international level, while also demonstrating a commitment to Benedictine values of the spirit of giving, of hospitality, love of others, listening, social justice, and stewardship. When Kimberly's son began considering colleges, the Tacoma-based family planned a visit to St. Ben's and St. John's. Upon arrival, Kim's excitement was palpable, very palpable, apparently. <laughs> Mom, I don't know yet if this is where I'm going. You need to calm down, <laughs> Kim recalls her son saying. Kim's response, I'm not excited that you might come here. I'm excited that I went here. That quieted him down. Kim explains, each time I come to St. Ben's, I feel like my spirit is home. Those aren't words that she uses lightly. By profession, Kim is a spirit doula. It's a term that encompasses her myriad passions. A certified massage therapist for more than 30 years, Kim is trained in a broad range of healing uh, modalities. She's also a birth doula, a coach, an advocate, and helps people prepare for their own deaths. While these specialties may appear disparate at first glance, there's a strong thematic core, serving, supporting, and guiding others on their own life's journeys. Half of Kim's clients have been with her for 20 plus years, giving Kim the chance to see them through many triumphs and many challenges. Kim's long felt called to serve others, but has faced her own share of challenges. As the seventh of eight children born to a mother who was left to raise them alone, college just wasn't in the cards. But a teacher at her Benedictine High School saw potential in Kim and helped arrange a meeting with St. Ben's financial aid. Kim didn't breathe a word of her plans to her mother until she came home from the meeting and announced, I'm going to college. I'm going to St. Ben's and I figured out a way to pay for it. Thanks to the generosity of others and her own hard work, Kim followed through on those plans. And those plans kept getting bigger and bigger. Kim dabbled in the corporate world after graduation, but couldn't shake the calling to serve. Kim moved west to join the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. One day, she found solace in a, at a massage treatment following a traumatic uh, event in her personal life. She walked out of that appointment with an inner sense of peace and a conviction that she could help bring that peace to others. Kim's definition, bringing peace to others, continues to evolve. Aside from her professional work, Kim is a dedicated philanthropist. A few highlights, she met and worked with Mother Teresa in Calcutta. She organized and participated in a service trip to Lesotho. She designed and implemented a peace program for elementary and middle school students. And while there's something quiet and deeply personal about the work she does every day, her efforts can't help but draw attention. In 2010, she was awarded the Greater Tacoma Peace Prize, which included a trip to the Nobel Prize ceremony in Norway. She was also the 1992 recipient of the St. Ben's Decade Award. Oh, and uh, Kim's son, he was accepted to nine colleges, but he came to St. John's. <laughs> it is an honor to present the 2017 Benedictine Service Award to Kimberly Ebert Palella. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know they were going to read all that, um, so my breath is a little bit taken away. And it's true that each time I come to St. Ben's, it's a coming home. When Kathy Denovan drove me up here on Thursday, as we got off the freeway and I could see the dome, my eyes filled with tears. Today, when the nuns blessed us, not only my 
eyes filled with tears, but my friends on both sides. This is the place that consistently calls me to my deepest self and calls me to bring her forth into the world fully. I can't tell you the name of any of my teachers at St. Ben's. <laughs> I can't tell you except for a handful of classes, but I remember nothing from them. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I don't remember how often I did or did not go to Mass or what organizations I belonged to. What I remember are special K-bars, <laughs> cheese bread delivered to our dorm after going out, Maria von Trapp coming and speaking at the Benedictine Art Center, studying at St. Ben's Library when I really needed to study, and studying at St. John's when I wanted a side order of socializing to go with my <laughs> studying. These things may seem trivial, but they speak to the heart of St. Ben's. The relationships built here are everything. The friendships that survive the challenges of space and time. The friendships of people I see only every five to 10 years, and yet when I see them, my, my heart is just so full of joy at the meeting. And then the handful of women and one man, <laughs> my dear friend Tom Hall, who are my soul brother and my soul sisters, who make me ask, how did I get to be so lucky? These relationships have planted the spirit of this place deeply in my heart. One of my family's favorite quotes comes from St. Francis. Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. How many of you remember Sister Mary Helene and Sister Brian? These women, uh, Sister Mary Helene was the resident uh, staff person for the Corona case. And Sister Brian's office, we had to walk by to get to Corona Hall. <laughs> yeah. These women embodied the Benedictine charism at all times, and I don't remember them ever doing it with words. Instead, they did it with their loving presence, their blind eye to our antics, and their deep belief in each of us. I try to come up here to St. Ben's as often as I can. I live in Tacoma, Washington, and so every few years, I try to come here just by myself, usually in the summertime when there's no students, and just have a day or two of retreat. I especially loved to do this when Mary Helene was in charge of hospitality. I would go out for a walk and I would come back to warm cookies next to my bed or a bowl of popcorn. Each time she welcomed me as a daughter. Sometime before around 2004 I came up and I had the great honor of getting to walk with Sister Brian. And on that walk she shared with me that she had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. I was so honored and so amazed at her transparency that she would share that with me and that we could have this time. I came back again Memorial Weekend of 2006. By that time, uh, Sister Brian's Alzheimer's had progressed and she was no longer here at St. Ben's. She was in a care center uh, near St. Cloud. Once again, Sister Mary Helene welcomed me as a daughter. And on Memorial Day, they were gonna have a special picnic. And Mary Helene asked me to come and sit in the dining hall with the sisters. It was raining, so the 
The picnic had been moved inside. And she told me that Sister Brian was going to be there. And I watched Mary Helene wait with anticipation as we sat at our table. And when she saw the car arrive, she literally jumped out of her seat and ran to greet her friend. She was 83 years old, and she ran <laughs> to greet her friend. And what was even more poignant for me is that at this point, Sister Brian's spirit was mostly not there. Her body was there, but her face was very blank. And there was only once or twice during our meal where all of a sudden something shifted, the twinkle came back in her eyes, and she was home with us, and then she left. I was so moved by that greeting. I was so moved that Mary Helene, who was going to visit Sister Brian twice a week, still ran to greet her, not knowing, you know, not expecting anything in return from her friend, but just going to greet her beloved with her eyes wide open. The beauty of this greeting embodied for me the soul of this college. It highlights the importance of our relationships. This place reminds me to run with my heart and my arms wide open to greet each day, each person, each experience, and each season of life. I am reminded to embrace my beloved alive in each person I encounter, no matter their race, their sexuality, their nationality, their gender, each and every person is worthy of this kind of divine presence. And this place calls me to embrace the beloved within myself, to listen to the whisperings of my own spirit, and to act on my soul's deep yearnings. It is the quality of the relationships formed here at St. Ben's that has allowed me to come home to myself and it has encouraged me to bring her more fully into the world. I pray that it has done the same for you, and I pray that just a bit of that takes root in my son. Thank you.